you're on. Hi everyone, I am here with your Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. Sherm's in a lot of pain today with his arm. He goes to see the surgeon tomorrow. Please keep him in your prayers, Sherman Crabtree. I'm gonna check the mail. Okay, well, take that mail down for me, please. Okay. Thank you. All right, guys, Sherm did manage the other day to do another picture for our book here. So I will show you our new picture. In case you wasn't watching on the last video, he had made this beautiful hummingbird to dedicate to his mom, because she loved hummingbirds. And this is the new one today. A T-Rex. Okay. Let's see here. I haven't done any in a while. I apologize for that. Maybe later today I will get one done, or tomorrow. I used to be really big into coloring. Just not so much anymore. Some days I'll, you know, think I might want to color, but I'm just busy with a lot of other things. And sure, uh, coloring is basically the only thing he can do anymore with his arm the way it is. He can't, like, do other activities, you know, where he's got to move his arm a lot and stuff. So he's, like, really depressed, too. Please keep him in your prayers. He's really depressed. He's in a lot of pain. He goes to talk to the surgeon tomorrow, which never even listens. Never asks if you have any questions. He flies in the room and flies right back out. He did the same thing the day Sherm had surgery. He flew in there. Didn't ask me if I had any questions or anything. Just flew in there with his backpack already on, ready to head out the door. And he just said like a couple words and then flew right back out. The same... He acted the same way when we had the consultation with him before the surgery. Never asked if you have any questions or anything. Hopefully he'll listen tomorrow. I'm going with Sherm tomorrow. And I'm trying, going to try to make him stay in there and listen to the questions we have. So please wish us luck with that. But Sherm's really depressed too because he can't do much with his arm. He'll never be the same, and all he can basically do is call her. He still can't sleep at night, but maybe he like sleeps off and on because his, you know, he has problems with his body jerking, and then that hurts his shoulder really bad. It'll wake him up from a dead sleep if he's sleeping. I mean, he only gets like maybe a couple hours every night. His eyes are so dark underneath. He's always up before I am, sitting in the chair in the room because it hurts him to lay down. And that's really odd to him because he usually stays in bed a lot longer than me. You can just see it in his face, the pain that he's in. It really breaks my heart. And you know, he gets tired of going to doctors that won't listen to you and won't try to even help the problem. It's like all they know anymore is to recommend you to go to physical therapy. It's crazy. Well, let's go over our other prayer requests. Please keep Lonnie Dulles Jr. Tater in your prayers. I didn't get to hear if he came home yet the other day, but he was hungry and sent in his mom recipes that he wanted her to make, so. I think he might be feeling a little better. Remember, he had the brain surgery. They took out 90% of the tumor, but they said it is the kind that will continue to grow back. He's already had it before, and this time it's back bigger. They got to wait for the biopsy they took to see what stage it is. Last time it was stage 3. So they're hoping that it still is a stage 3 or lower. Please pray for Michelle Watkins. She just got home from the hospital the other day from her kidneys and her sugar. It drops down way low. She said one day her sugar was in the 30s, and then the next day it was over 500. She's got a lot of chronic health problems, and she lives alone with her fur baby, Bella. Please pray for Linda Peoples. She's the one that the forklift went through. 
Please pray for Linda Thacker. She has dementia and stage 5 kidney failure. Please pray for Zach Kirby. The doctors said there was no more they could do for him. He's in his 30s and has cancer, and it's already spread to his brain and through the rest of his body. And it's so sad because he's got two little kids, and he's also got a fiancé. But they're taking him to another hospital, you know, to try to see if they can do anything. But I say it's all in God's hands now, I would say. Only God knows what's best for him. We know that. But his family, Zach and his family, is going to need a lot of prayers. Please pray for Sherman Crabtree. I explained that to you. Please pray for my mom, Rhonda Karshner, and my oldest niece, Abby Myers. Mom's still trying to get to keep the house. I hope it works for her. I hope she gets to keep it, but I'm afraid what she's doing is in vain. That's the truth. That's all in God's hands, too. Please pray for Cindy and Jim Welsh. Cindy's been in a lot of pain. She's having to be having to use her walker a lot, and she never uses a walker or anything, but she has to use it to get around because of her legs here the last couple of days. Please pray for Jim Welsh. She's always getting lung infections. Please pray for Dora Carper. She's a widow and lives alone, and she's a little older. Please pray for Elizabeth Jeffries. She's in her 80s and she has skin cancer on her nose and has a lot of other health problems she falls a lot and she lives alone so sometimes it takes hours it did the time before last she laid on the floor for hours bleeding until one of her home health aides came i keep trying to talk her into getting one of those life alert things she really needs one especially living alone and how she's falling all the time Please pray for Judy Thompson. She has cancer of the esophagus, and she just had her gallbladder out last month, and she's got a lot of other health problems. She's older as well. Please pray for Barb Post. She has an immune disorder. Please pray for Judy Osborne. She has cancer. Please pray for April Thacker. She has a lot of chronic illnesses. Please pray for Michael Cairns. He has Crohn's disease, and he'll be having surgery for one of his hernias, on September 11th. Please pray for Logan Cairns. He'll be starting therapy for his knee soon. He got a steroid shot in it and he said it did help. I know it helped the first time I got him too. It was really nice. But I've had him three or four times now and the last time they stopped working, which the doctor told me that would happen. So I didn't go back to get it anymore. I always got both mine, both mine at once, both knees. Please pray for Jim Mitchell. I seen he was out again the other day. Looked like, like a family reunion or something. So please keep Jim in your prayers. Jim Mitchell, he is doing, getting around and doing better now since his daughter passed away. Okay, guys, so something happened to my um, Bible Gateway page. I thought this is my computer, the stupid laptop, has problems zooming in and out by itself. It's so aggravating. But I looked and it was still on the 100%, like it always is. But it's like clear across the page today and like really small. So I hope I don't mess up for you guys. I'm going to try my best here. But it's never looked like this before and I can't get it to fix for some reason. But today we're starting with 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. And, um... Hang on a sec. Did this even take me to the wrong one? It says for the 26th. If we're talking like this, you think it would be in 2 Corinthians already, but I think it might be messed up today. But we're going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 11 today, and this will be Paul speaking, and he is he sent a letter. He's writing a letter, and it is sent to the church in Corinth where he went a lot. So that is what we're going to do right now. This is Paul speaking. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother 
Sosthenes, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be his holy people, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of the grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, with all kinds of speech and with all knowledge, God thus confirming our testimony about Christ among you. Therefore you do not lack any spiritual gift, as you are eagerly wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. He who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no division among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers and sisters, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. And that's where we're going to stop with that today. So he'll be trying to get them to, Paul would be trying to get them to settle the matters with the people fighting. Okay, it looks like we started a psalm yesterday, but we didn't do a video yesterday. So today we're just going to read Psalm 40, verses 11 through 17. Do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me, for troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails within me. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May all who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, aha, aha, be appalled at their own shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. And that is where we're going to stop with Psalm 40. We have three Proverbs today. Proverbs chapter 22, verses 2, 3, and 4. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is maker of them all. Just like he is the evil people as well. We're all her, we are all his God's children, but just like the people who are mean and evil, they're on Satan's side. Everybody has the chance when they're born to accept Jesus or Satan. And some people just choose to go on Satan's side and they become very, very evil. So some of God's children turn away from him. The evil, those people turn away from him. The prudent see danger and take refuge, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor and life. Okay guys, that was everything for today. We did our prayer requests and everything, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's Bible reading been raining here a little bit today. It's supposed to rain tomorrow too when we go out. Um, but I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again soon with another Bible reading. Bye guys. God bless.